Oh God. Woo. I've tried to learn how to do kick flips. You go up, right? <laughs> I mean, what can I say? He just turned one three days ago. He's chaos. I love him. <laughs> I am leaving for Greece in two days to go film a fun little movie. Uh, it's the second installment of Knives Out. So um, I'm terrified. <laughs> I've, never, I've never had a schedule like this. And it's very exciting. And um, it's really fucking cool. Excuse my French, <laughs> but uh, but it's also extremely overwhelming because it's all happening. It feels like it's all happening at once, even though that's it's not it's not like it's it's been like two years in the making. I feel overwhelmed. But I have to remind myself it's fruits of labor, um, and I'm really lucky to be where I am. It's crazy and it's a little overwhelming. I have to text my friends. I'm like I'm not ignoring you. I'm just overwhelmed. <laughs> and I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's go get drinks. So I used to work this little food stand in Charleston, South Carolina, and we were making coffee all day. And of course there'd be coffee that would be old. So a trick they taught us to not make more waste coffee is you just top it off with a little water. So we're gonna do that. Cold brew. Delish. <laughs> I made you some three hour old coffee. My favorite. <laughs> How'd you know? <laughs> it's cold. Ooh. Also, I put ice cubes in it to mask the fact that we ran out it's, of coffee. Um, yeah, we ran oh out of coffee. We ran out of coffee. Did you know that? Did you know we ran out of coffee? I'm trying to find where we were. I feel a like whole we were year ago. Locked in isolation. Stay. It would definitely one year ago. Drum roll. I was, one year ago I was in Wilmington. This is right after you posted on Instagram. This was right after we decided oh, yeah. to Tell the world, be official. Yeah. Everybody knew, it just we weren't, we, we didn't. We did a good job of like not really wanting the we world to know. We did a horrible for, job. Well, no, I mean, like, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was pretty bad. We didn't no, know. I mean like, we, our inner circle kind of knew, mm -hmm. but we didn't really want to I guess. I think it was still new, and so we didn't want to like. Mm -hmm. I think we wanted to enjoy it first. Yeah. When the show came out, it was mid-pandemic. We could only really gauge how it was going through social media, and mm -hmm. you know, people, like people were posting about it on TikTok, and it was so funny. Like, you know, I'd be scrolling through my for you page, and there would just be videos about like Outer Banks and like characters yeah. and um, like the discovery page on Instagram and um, and people making memes about it. That was really the only gauge we had during a pandemic. We were all quarantined in my apartment. Netflix had this whole idea of all of us sort of watching it for the first time and seeing it pop up on the on the platform. So we all had had a, a couple beers and yeah. we're getting a little rowdy and then... Uh, I had post-mated um, tequila from Pink Dot mm. and we made a big pillow fort. We watched it go from um, like the little title card that was like coming soon to all the episodes pop up and the things that said Outer Banks new episodes and we went and we clicked on the first episode and we watched like the intro like the Pogues running through the house under construction and Mm -hmm. um, and then <laughs> and then we refused to watch anymore because we didn't want to watch ourselves. <laughs> Let's do a drip coffee, please. Tiramisu or carrot cake? Okay, let's do that. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> the last time I was in here was right before Outer Banks. And uh, before I left for Outer Banks the first season. Um, so this is quite exciting. I used to come here all the time and get breakfast. I'd read books, I'd read plays, I would be submitting for auditions um, and I remember right before I left for my, just for Outer Banks in general, um, and at the time it was just the callbacks or the director's session, um, I came here and got breakfast 
and I called my mom. Um, and I was like, hey mom, <laughs> I'm coming home for a few days. I have an audition. It's for a Netflix show and it's in Charleston, weirdly enough. And she was very excited to hear that and never came back. Yeah. I had just freshly dropped out of college and I had packed up my car and I was like, I'm moving to California. I'm going to go to for pilot season. I'm going to do it. Like, mom and dad, I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> I dropped out right before midterms and they were like, what's, what did we, they were like, what did we do wrong? It was everything they didn't want. I, I think at the time they didn't want their child to do. Um, and I did. And, uh, <laughs> and I came out here and then I realized like, you know, go walking into my first few auditions and just being out here in general, I realized, holy shit, like there's a thousand of me. I realized very quickly I, I didn't believe in myself enough to, like, I, I, to have confidence. So I had to get really real with myself and be like, do you want to do this? Is this something you want to pursue? Because you can still go back to college. You can still like, am I making a big mistake? I had to get to know myself really quickly because I realized I didn't know myself. It was a reality check for sure. I was like, I need to get my ego in check because just because I moved to California doesn't mean that things are going to happen to me or happen for me. And it has happened really fast. Yeah. It's all happened very fast. Learning how to deal with the anxiety of it all and the imposter syndrome of it all has been uh, quite a journey. Believing in myself was hard. That wasn't something that came easy. I think if I could say one thing to Maddie uh, four years ago, sitting at Beachwood Cafe, I think I would just tell her it's going to be fine. You're going to be fine. Stop worrying about everything. Um, you know, it's, it's going to work out. But at the same time, you know, I'm kind of glad I didn't know it, that because I think the anxiety and the worry is what kind of really lit a fire under my ass to uh, do something about it. My parents told me to go get a job and I think they were expecting like to go, I don't know, get a job working at H&M or something. I instead went to Horse Barn and got a job working the barns in the morning. So every morning I would get up at like, I don't know, 6 a.m. and I would drive to the barn and I would muck the stalls, feed them, give them their supplements, um, and I earned $30 a day. And I was so proud of myself until I realized how much a tank of gas costs. I love my job, but that job was some of the best memories. She's <laughs> good job. So this is Chaplin and we've decided that we vibe. Right? Yeah. That's a yes. Hi. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not choosing favorites, but I kind of am. When I'm writing, I feel very centered, but also very alert because I'm trying to figure out what the horse is telling me, what's around us, if there's anything that might spook them. Just learning how to communicate with them. And if you stay calm, they'll stay calm. So it's kind of a lesson in learning how to center yourself first. It's cathartic. There's a reason people go and do horse therapy. It's because it's wonderful. These are not the shoes to horseback ride in. I think the thing I've learned the most about my anxiety and dealing with my emotions and learning how to conquer the things like the, the self-sabotage and the imposter syndrome is just learning how to kind of give in and let things happen. And if it doesn't go to plan, that's okay. And uh, give yourself the permission to tell your anxiety to shut the fuck up. <laughs> you know, it's funny because this was one of the first places I came to when I moved here. And it just feels like this super crazy full circle moment. I had no idea what was going to happen. So I think LA has really just been a lesson in learning how to let go. I'm excited. I'm excited to see what happens. I feel like it's completely off. <laughs> <laughs>